Hey there Seahawks, it's Miss Adams and in this video we're going to talk about displaying quantitative data. So remember from our first unit that quantitative data is data that we can collect measurements for and something that it would make sense to calculate an average of. Alright, so the different types of quantitative displays are dot plots, histograms, stem plots, and box plots. A dot plot uses dots and it just puts a dot above each number I'm on a number line. It's a really great way to kind of see the overall pattern um, and if there's anything that doesn't really fit with the pattern. The histograms are similar to bar graphs but the bars are touching usually and they use a range of values. A stem plot and it's also called a stem and leaf plot. It breaks apart the numbers digits by placing um, like the tens place and then the ones place or the hundreds place and then the ones place. It's always like a single digit usually on the leaf side. Um, but it breaks it up by place value and it's great for two digit numbers to see the shape and outliers and still have like the actual numbers. Whereas in a histogram, you don't always know the actual numbers. You just kind of know that I have this many in this category. Um, box plots group the data into 25% chunks which are called quartiles and are great for comparing data sets side by side. They're not very good for um, talking about the shape of the distribution. All right, make a dot plot. A group of students were asked about how many siblings they have. The dot, the data is below. So zero, we're gonna put a dot there. One, put a dot there. Two, and we're just going to keep going through this list. So plotting all of these dots on our number line till we get all of them there. And so I can already kind of start to see a trend. It looks like it's um, skewed, this distribution. And we'll learn a little bit more about that when we learn about the different shapes. But I would say this distribution. Oopsies. is skewed right. All right, so make a stem plot. So again, I have this data and I wanna do this in order. It needs to be a numerical order. Um, so you could go ahead and organize the data in order first. I'm just gonna go ahead and like color code this. So all my, 10 is my smallest number. So all my numbers in the tenths, like between 10 and 19. I'm going to underline those and then I'm going to go ahead and make my stem be one and then I'm going to add my leaves which would be the digits in the ones place. So 10 would be one in the tens place, a zero in the one place. And then I have four, no, I have 12. Then I have a 14, a 14 again, and an 18. All right, then I'm going to move to my 20s, all the numbers in the 20s. All right, so I have my stem will be 2, and my leaves, I have a 20, I have a 22, I have a 23, a 25, a 25 again, and a 27. Then I can move into my 30s. So I have a 30 and a 32 and a 36. And then my 40s, I have a 41 and that's it for the 40s. I am gonna put the 50s, even though I don't have any numbers in the 50s, I'm still gonna put that stem. I'm just not gonna have any leaves. Okay, so that I can kind of see that I have a bit of a gap there. And then 60s, I have one at 65. Okay, now anytime you make a stem plot or a stem and leaf plot, you always have to make a key. All right, and so your key kind of tells you, like, if I have two and that two on the one side of the T-chart and a three on the other side of that T-chart, then those come together to make the number 23. And you would put the units if you knew what this was measuring. So 23 feet, 23, whatever it is that it's measuring. All right. Make a histogram, collect the data, or the data collected on college tuitions at a sample of colleges is given below. Fill in the table to create a histogram. All right, so I'm gonna put a title here, college tuition, 
Um, and then they gave me some sample uh, values of different tuition costs. And I want to break it apart from zero to five thousand, five thousand and one dollars to fifteen thousand dollars, fifteen thousand one dollar to twenty five thousand dollars, and then anything above twenty five thousand. All right, so I'm gonna do across the bottom. I'm starting at zero, then I'm gonna go to five thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty five thousand, and I'm not gonna worry about anything more because it's just gonna be anything above that will be the next group. And then over here, I'm gonna count. This is frequency. Down here was the college tuition cost and dollars. You could put um, tuition cost and dollars instead of college tuition. But so I'm going to go through this list. The first one was four thousand six hundred sixty-one dollars. Well, that would fall into the zero to five thousand category, and I'm just going to use tally marks. So then nine thousand seven hundred eighty-five falls into the five thousand to fifteen thousand category. Ten thousand six hundred and ninety-nine falls into the 5,000 to 15,000 category. And I'm gonna keep going, just putting a tally mark where those um, different tuition values belong. Okay, so now I have all my tuition values. So in the first group from zero to 5,000, I only have one college there. So I'm gonna draw my bar then I'm going from 5,000 to 15,000, I had six. Okay, so notice this is a little bit different than a bar graph that the, the bars are touching, all right, because it's a range of values. Anything from zero to 5,000 would go into this first bar and anything 5,000 to 15,000 would go into the second bar. All right, so the, the values are, um, there's like only a dollar off, so it's the bars are touching each other. Not like categories where you had like red, blue, green, and space in between. All right, and then I had four that were above, so I just drew that above that twenty-five thousand mark, and um, anything above there, we don't. It's just anything above twenty-five thousand. All right, go Seahawks.